The Sacrifice of Alcestis, Chapter 6 Chapter 6. Quickly the days and nights sped by, and the palace was full of joy and happiness. At last the season came round that had brought the strange herdsman to Admetus the year before. On the selfsame day of the month he came and stood once more before him. Twelve moons have waxed and waned, O king, he said, since the day when first thou gavest me shelter in thy halls. The time of my cleansing is accomplished, and I am come to bid thee farewell. Farewell, cried Admetus. That is a bitter word in mine ears. Fain would I have thee with me always. Yet have I no heart to beg thee to remain, for thou art mightier than I, and even to call thee guest and friend would sound presumptuous in mine ears. Farewell, then. May the gods reward thee tenfold for the blessings thou hast showered upon my house. When first I stood within thy halls thou didst say to me, Stranger, who art thou, and whose blood is on thy hands, dost thou not ask me that question now once more ere we part? Master, I asked it then in ignorance of thee and of thy ways. Today it leath with thee to tell me or not as thou wiliest. If thou wouldst hide thy name from me still, I am content. Nay, I will tell thee, for tease meet thou shouldst know. The fame of the deed I wrought has spread far and wide throughout the world wherever men speak with all the name of Delphi. Thou knowest how in the beginning earth held the sacred shrine, and gave forth, from the mouth of her priestess, dark and dreadful oracles, and chaos and night had their seats there, and the wingless foul furies, the trackers of blood. Round about the awful spot the mountains re-echoed the voice of lamentation and the cries of human victims led forth to sacrifice. And lest at any time one strong of arm and stout of heart should come to wrest away the shrine from the powers of darkness, there lay before the gates a guardian fierce and terrible. Python, the sleepless dragon. In and out and round about the portals he wound his monstrous length, and his scales threw back the light like points of flashing steel, and his eyes were like the red-tongued flame. No man in those days could pass that dreadful portal, but, like a dim, uncertain echo, the voice of the priestess floated down to the trembling folk below. At last one day there came a shining one whose sword was the sunlight, and his arrows were darts of living fire. With the strength of his right arm he slew the python, and stretched out his monstrous coils beneath the hot sun's rays, till the flesh melted and rotted away, and only his bones lay gleaming white upon the rocks, to show how once he had guarded the shrine against all comers. And the victor took the shrine and made it his own, and placed his priestess there to utter forth true oracles to men when the divine spirit filled her breast. The waters of the Castalian spring he purified, so that those who came might wash away their guilt, and stand with pure hearts before the shrine. And over the green lawns beneath Parnassus he led the choir of the muses, the bright-haired sisters of poetry, and music, and dancing. Because their feet have touched the earth where Castalia has its fount, men say that those who drink of those waters are filled with their spirit, so that the words that they speak and the songs that they sing are immortal, and will live forever upon the lips and in the hearts of men. He who did this thing and turned the darkness into light stands here before thee now. Apollo, cried Admetus, lord and master. And he fell upon the ground before him, and clasped him by the knees. Ah, forgive the blindness and presumption of my heart, he begged. Nay, there is naught to forgive. They that shed blood must pay the price yea, though it be the blood of a monster rightfully poured out upon the ground. Light was the cost of my purification, for thou art a kind master and an honourable man. But now my hands are clean, I go back to my seat on fair Olympus, where high above the clouds the deathless gods dwell evermore in the clear, bright light of heaven. Yet do I love thee, and will not forget thee. When the shadow of despair falls dark across thy path, call on me, and I will help thee. So saying, he bent forward and took Admetus by the hand, and raised him up. Once more that piercing glance burned through to his very soul. Then the stranger turned and strode away across the palace court. Like one changed to marble Admetus stood and watched him go. Then with a start he rushed to the gateway, and looked eagerly down the road. But though he shaded and strained his eyes, he could see that familiar form no more. Only far away on the dim horizon the veil of clouds which hung about Olympus melted away beneath the sun's bright rays, and the snow-clad peak flashed clear and sparkling as a crystal against the summer sky. Lo, even dread Olympus smiles a welcome to the god of light and truth, said Admetus. Then with a sigh he turned back into the palace.